Hello, everybody. Thank you, Zoran, for a very nice introduction. Uh, on the top of that, I would say that uh, I'm also a very good friend of Marco, so, and, uh, which is also important because uh, since, since then, uh, I can say that we are working kind in a perfect synergy. Uh, Marco he has uh, already explained to you how people in the backstage can be replaced by robots, and I will tell you how the people on the main stage can be replaced by robots. Presenters, journalists, and so on. Okay. Okay. So I'm joking, of course. So actually, the topic of my talk is compl something completely different. Is actually how robots can support humans to be better, to be more efficient, and yeah. So um, so I'm happy just to uh, say that um, actually I'm proud that I'm part of University of Belgrade. So and uh, welcome to Belgrade to for all of you who are maybe first time uh, here. Uh, University of Belgrade is uh, one of the largest universities in this part of Europe with uh, 100,000 uh, 100, students, uh, 31 faculties and 11 institutes. And um, also I can see a lot of familiar faces with, uh, from my uh, School of Electrical Engineering and I'm really happy about that. And also um, I'm from uh, Department of Signals and Systems at School of Electrical Engineering. So where our students can learn really some cool stuff like robotics, artificial intelligence, uh, digital signal processing, biomedical engineering, and also with uh, also control theory. Um, and uh, of course, uh, I'm representing part of this department, which is dealing with uh, robotics. So now, since you're aware of my um, academic background and my professor professorship role, I would also, um, according to that, uh, would like to ask some questions. So I would really appreciate some interaction from your side. And so then let's start uh, first with the uh, quiz. So, and uh, any volunteers to answer these uh, questions? So, which are where and when? And it's about the first worldwide bionic hand. It's about the first worldwide active execute, um, first worldwide upper limb orthosis, and uh, one of the first, not the first, but one of the first worldwide active uh, below knee prosthesis. Belgrade, okay. No, now we only missing when, yeah. Good. So yes, as you said. So some of you knows, but many of you don't know that basically um, we say that um, humanoid robotics is basically born in Belgrade. It's thanks to some very famous people, which I would like to mention here. It's. Uh, our academician Miomir Vukobratovic, then academician Rajko Tomovic, academician Dejan Popovic, and also our professor Veljko Potkonjak. So please um, use your phones later and uh, browse these people. And also, um, I would also like to invite you to visit uh, Museums of Science and Technology, which is in his historical part of Dorchel, historical part of Belgrade. So it's really nearby to uh, Skadarlia Bohemian Quarter. So if you go there tonight, or tomorrow, spend half an hour to visit the museum and enjoy uh, more on, on the history of not only Serbian robotics, but on worldwide robotics. Um, OK, so where are we now? Where is robotics now? It's in the field. It's in the inspection and maintenance of infrastructure. It's in the healthcare. It's in surgery rooms. It's in rehabilitation, it's in diagnosis, in support of patients, in support of healthcare professionals, in industry, in assembly, in painting, in gluing. So really a lot of activities dedicated to robots today. And what are the features of today's robots? They are fully autonomous. They are extremely fast. They are super precise. They are incredibly accurate, and they are 100% repeatable, and they can handle a really high payload. And how we, can, how we benefit today, basically, from these features? So they are part of so-called Industry 4.0. And I would really like to um, ask you, what is for you Industry 4.0? What does it mean? I believe that there are a lot of professionals who are dealing with some technologies, so you can see here. Any volunteers? 
I believe this this is here. Digital twins. Okay. Yeah. Some connectivity between some systems. Exchange of data, intelligent representation of data. It's all these technologies. Autonomous robot, big data and analytics, cyber security, cloud computing, industrial Internet of Things, additive manufacturing, augmented reality, and digital twins. Okay, but um, yeah, my question is then. Second question for you, and what is missing here? What is missing in Industry 4.0? Anybody? Exactly. Where are the people? So, what do we need? We need to solve a lot of ethical and societal challenges that uh, Basically, these uh, very nice, very very nice technologies um, are bringing. So we need actually to go step further. We need to transform our industry 4.0 into another concept. So industry 5.0, which is basically initiated in Germany, 2020, and uh, it's more human-centered approach. So it's it's about how to Basically, how to make humans on the workplace more efficient, how to make these workplaces more enjoyable to humans. So that's actually the main points. So uh, two critical aspects for this. So to enable efficient collaboration is to ensure safety and increase efficiency of the industry. There are two main challenges, and many people are working right now on, on this. So how we can actually ensure safety? We can ensure safety mostly by hardware. So there is enabling technology which supports us in this mission, and those are cobots. So current version of cobots are really supported by some really intelligent sensing system which can detect that interaction is happening and react, you know. So, but still, some processing time is needed so that robots really um, be fully safe and do not harm um, its co-workers. So, and so some new hardware is needed not only on sensing level but also on actuation level. So that basically can um, leverage of these impacts. And then it's about increased efficiency. It's about how robots can increase efficiency of humans and how robots and humans together be more efficient. So there are a lot of challenges in this aspect in human-robot interaction, human-robot collaboration, human-machine interfaces. They're all really hot topics today. And so what to do towards the industry 5.0? I will tell you what we at uh, our lab in our group, uh, in ETF Robotics Lab, what we are working on in this aspect. So our research interests are human-robot collaboration, human-centered robotics mechatronics, artificial intelligence, collaborative robotics, and soft robots. And application of these systems and cobots, mostly in industrial and healthcare sector. Um, of course, um, it's all about the people, so I would like just to present some of uh, excellent people working together with me. Uh, so Maya, Branko, and Vlada are already PhDs. And Nikola Zavisha, Miloš, and Filip, they are already PhD by knowledge, but they still need some time so, to reach also the formal title. And I believe that Miloš is with me, so Miloš say hello to the audience. So, and uh, yeah, so it's really um, a lot of nice uh, topics so that these people is, uh, are working on. Uh, I also want to present you some of the equipments which are really important for research in making this uh, human-robot collaboration efficient, starting from some uh, cooperative industrial robot cell, 
um, also some setups that can um, help this uh, sensing system that can support this human-robot collaboration. Uh, of course, some collaborative robots, also some more human-like robots. You can see here what is also very important to use for research purposes is some systems that can measure human emotion. It's mostly variable systems, inertial measurement units, um, EMG systems for measuring muscle activity, and so on. And of course, a lot of modeling, a lot of learning, a lot of simulations. So what is the methodology we apply in this research? So we would like to contribute the next generation of collaborative robots and to improve safe and efficient human-robot collaboration in the following aspects. So we are working on design and control of next level, so actuators, so for cobots, which are based not only, as I said, on uh, advances in sensing technologies, but also advances in actuating technologies. So we are working on learning human motion and behavior patterns then so because it's really for this efficient collaboration it's really of key importance to understand what what uh, what human is working and uh, also we are developing some new sensing technologies basically uh, methodologies uh, how to assess some information which are crucial for interaction which cannot be measured directly. And also we are developing some control algorithms for safe physical and robot interaction, which is based on kinematic reconfiguration in null space, about joint impedance shaping, and about algorithms that combine different approaches using control algorithms, um, control theory, but also using learning. So just briefly, so of course I will not speak about uh, maths and uh, uh, and theory behind, but just to yeah, point out um, some ongoing activities. And after the presentation, I will be there. You can also browse uh, ETF Robotics uh, webpage to learn more about uh, concrete application and theory behind this. So what we are developing? We are developing actuators, which are based on pneumatics or electric actuators, which can, as a humans, so not... not uh, just uh, control joint position as a contemporary robot, but can also control a stiffness. So what does it mean? So if you, let's say, um, face the interaction so as a human, so you will allow some deviation for equilibrium position. So this is something which is new in, in the field of robotics and which this new control algorithm sensing actuation system it also allow. And for safe human-robot interaction, it's essential part, especially in terms of safety. Then it's about predicting human emotions. So this is also a very nice picture, yeah, uh, presented by Miloš and the recent conference. And it's about combination of some sensing system to assess human emotion. It's about combining vision and combining variables as inputs to neural networks for human motion recordings. And then, after we record the motion, then we need to understand in which optimal strategy human perform motion. So one of the technologies we are using in this sense in, is inverse optimal control. And this is something which is expertise of Philip, the guys in the lab I present you. So then we need to understand some um, um, characteristics, some uh, mechanical impedance, as, as I said. So it's as a sh as essential feature of human-robot interaction. This is something you cannot directly measure. So it's like a linear spring. So when you apply some force to spring, so it will stretch or extend. And uh, this is basically this stiffness or mechanical impedance. And you cannot measure it directly. So what you can do is to measure stiffness. Uh, you can measure force or you can measure length of the spring. And then you can estimate. So this is something similar 
with robots. But you know, for, for estimation in, in, in with this approach, you always need to have interaction, which is not possible, of course. So what we do, we combine this principle with some models. And of course, these models are changing with the time. They are changing uh, because um, of uh, temperature of diffs with of where and with, with the time. So we need to constantly update these models using this um, relation between force and um, deviation from the equilibrium position. And we are using some really nice theory of um, uh, theory of uh, unknown input observer. Then there are some algorithms for safe physical human robot interaction. On the picture here, you can see Zavisha performing experiments. These experiments are basically about detecting collision of real industrial robots. So, so just to understand the challenge of it. So each robot has one processor. And uh, it, it, this processor is work is do all the computations. So if, of course, robots are always doing some repetitive motions. But if you sample these signals, so they are not always um, exact with the timing. So you need to match some sequence signals and to detect where collision is happening. So, and we developed some really nice models about uh, dynamic time warping and the modification of it so that we can really distinguish between intentional and non-intentional collision that robot is working on. On the picture below, you can see um, part of the PhD thesis of Branco, and it's about exactly shaping this critical parameter, which is impedance of robot. So to be really efficient in collaboration with human or also um, executing some task in a fully human-like uh, manner and without with, with avoiding really high collision forces, which is for assembly task critical in cutting, in inserting, in assembly. So it's really some nice work. So um, using also, again, some um, nonlinear optimization techniques in this sense. And this is some um, really nice example of this human center approach we are working on. It, it's, it's a project together with uh, factory uh, uh, with Galib Electronics in West Serbia. And uh, it's the biggest producer of uh, fiscal devices and GPS system in Serbia. And they have a problem of assembly because they have 20 different uh, but very similar pieces they, they assemble there. And um, so the control quality depends on worker because mostly errors are happening because they forgot to assemble one piece. So how we approach this problem? So we develop some systems, I would say. So to guide worker operator on the assembly line through the process, also to support worker and to also to measure some mental workload and engagement of human. So to detect if human is losing focus. So, you know, so for, for operator itself, it's really hard to report to the management that he is in a problem, that he needs rest, that he needs a break. But when we apply systems that can automatically detect this kind of actions, uh, so it, it's really helpful to, to, to operators so that can take rest, so that, that also the production manager to avoid, to avoid um, errors due to loss of focus or uh, yeah, loss of concentration of the operator as the main source of, um, yeah, of the damage parts. So, and I will present you a video presenting so this innovation and the desire for constant improvement are part of who we are. Gallup Electronics' mission is to introduce new technologies in order to increase productivity and product quality. Another motive for that is an aspiration to improve the working conditions of our employees, their comfort and happiness in the workplace. For more than 75 years, as one of the largest faculty in electrical and computer engineering in Southeast Europe, 
ETF has provided high quality engineering, education, and research. ETF is one of the key drivers of research and technological development, as well as support to companies in enhancing productivity, innovations, and market competitiveness, both in Serbia and worldwide. In robotics, we are developing tools and methods to support wider use of robots in healthcare and manufacturing sectors. And okay, so just for those who are more interested to learn more about the technologies I, I was talking today, um, I invite you to um, read some of the papers. There are recent papers of our group, so you can see that they are mostly in the most reputable journals in robotics, IEEE, Robotics Automation Letters, IEEE Robotics Automation Magazine, Control Systems Letters. So. A really, really um, cutting-edge research, and also I would like to mention some funding. So some selected projects that, that really supported us in these activities. They're mostly um, funding provided by European Commission from Horizon 2020 program, including the H Hero, the H Square projects, uh, where we are, um, let's say, selected as a competence center for healthcare and for for industry in this part of Europe, Bovi. Shop for Sierra, which is for connected smart factories, human centered, and Reconcel for reconfigurable robotic cells for small and medium um, enterprises, and for Next Cobot, which is a project funded by um, Republic of Serbia. And um, also, um, also uh, yeah, this is um, our project partners from ongoing projects, so we are really happy that we are in position to collaborate with the leading institution so that also to create uh, really opportunities for our smart students to work with uh, leading European institution 
on the cutting edge technology in robotics to work from Belgrade and let's say to, to make impact um, worldwide. And also to, um, also to mention some uh, partners, uh, national partners that supported our research that uh, collaborate with us on the topics and in industry, uh, ABB Serbia, FANUC Serbia and Gematic and also system integration servitor tip tech vision equipment and also in healthcare, uh, our let's say sister lab, which is uh, a laboratory at uh, uh, School of Electrical Engineering in uh, Biomedical Instrumentation and Technologies, Clinics for Rehabilitation Miroslav Zotovic in Sokobansk in Belgrade, and uh, our two companies, Embrain Train and Technalia. So that was all from my side. I've, I invite you to follow our, um, for more, and to stay tuned about human robot collaboration. Follow ETF Robotics on LinkedIn. And I'm happy to answer, answer some questions. Yes. yes. If there are any. Are there any questions before I start with mine? Uh, maybe I can pro provoke some. So, uh, where do you expect uh, these cobots to get first into the factories or into the households? For example, I could use a good cobot in the kitchen doing all these repetitive tasks like cutting, chopping, mixing, yeah. beating. And it, I, it sounds like it's not going to be a complicated thing to create. Yeah. So, cobots are, let's say, already there in industry to some extent. So we need some more advances, especially on this human robot collaboration. So to be more there, but uh, what is expected as the most promising application areas for cobots are actually healthcare because of the staffing, uh, staff cri uh, staffing crisis in all Europe and worldwide and about of added value that these cobots can create, especially in rehabilitation, for instance, in the after stroke patients, when you need extensive uh, rehabilitation process, which uh, any uh, uh, there is no healthcare system in the world that can really uh, provide the level of healthcare and intensity that, that is needed in this case, and uh, of course not even. Uh, what uh, what, it, what would they do? It, Could you explain us? Yes. So so they can. I mean, so the, the cobots in this uh, healthcare application, so they can perform um, hundreds of um, this uh, training rehabilitation process with patients. So they can let's say, support uh, 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 therapist in delivering this therapy and also to support them in, uh, support doctors is assessing uh, progress and assessing of uh, level of injuries, which is also related to economy because it costs you if you uh, keep someone in a, at clinics who do not provide enough progress uh, and then you do not provide the same service to someone who is really in need. So it's very societal and uh, economy, uh, economical thing and so a lot of... Lot of uh, so are, are they collecting data while they are helping people? I mean, are they sending those data to... Do I mean, are they creating something out of that? Uh, of course. So, so they, exactly. So this is... Um, when we are talking especially about this um, healthcare task. So uh, right now, uh, the, the progress, the level of injury is assessed by a doctor on, 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 on personal base. It's very subjective. And with this, you can really provide some nice data so that can support analytics and decision-making of doctors so how to proceed further in therapy, for instance. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Here's the question. So we'll wait for the mic. Here's the mic. Just raise your hand so we can see where... I actually don't have a question, just wanted to uh, say that this was very impressive for me, uh, for someone who has no knowledge in robotics. I'm data engineer and have never been into robotics, but this presentation ignited the interest in robotics for me. Just thank you for your presentation. It was very, very, very good. Yeah, thank you for the comment. So as you can imagine, so robotics is not about uh, electrical engineers, so robotics is for all engineers, but also it's for social scientists, for uh, psychologists, for medical doctors, and for yeah, many more. And how often do you see people impressed with robots when they face them for yeah, the first I, time? I see many people impressed, but uh, my daughter was not impressed, basically, when I 
uh, show my robots for the first time in the lab because she expected some robots which can also uh, deliver some chocolate and juices, but uh, it didn't happen, so it was kind of disappointing. It was a disaster, yes. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Thank you, Costa. Yeah. Costa Ivanovic, Professor Costa Ivanovic, was with us. <laughs>